all I'm doing here is really just taking a nice razor blade over the surface and um, looking for any like embedded metal or anything that's in it that you know I might not be able to feel when I'm cleaning it and yeah I actually have found pieces of metal embedded in these I believe it all right, so I think we've made it to the point where we're going to go ahead and uh, Lance is going to help me and we're going to start measuring uh, my granite plate and uh, we're going to do some measuring and eventually get to some lapping. But I think Lance wants to go ahead and talk about this a little bit, so I'm going to let him take the lead right here. Yeah, I asked him for a couple of minutes at the beginning of this video. I can't help when we shoot a video but read some of the comments. And when we were up at John's place uh, recently for the scraping class, I read through some of the comments on the video that where we were actually lapping his plates and measuring them. And I, I want to, there's nothing that I'm about to say that's bragging. It's just I want people to know my background because there were a number of people who commented on that video, you know, about some guy measuring the plates and the credibility of, you know, the results and all that. And so I want everybody to understand that, yeah, I am a veterinarian and we talk about that and joke about it. And I always joke about not being a machinist or whatnot, but I've taken a deep interest in some of the more precision and metrology related stuff. Um, and yes, I've only been doing this a little over a year, but I have had a mentor and a guy that's been here a number of times. We spend a lot of time on the phone. I've spoken to two other people who do this for a living off and on. You know, I have a very strong physics background. I've got a degree in chemistry. And there's one thing that I'm really good at and that's learning stuff. And so I want your viewers to know that we're not just halfway doing this. Like the results that we're getting, I would put up against any um, certified group. And I have uh, all the confidence in the world that when we're done, if Adam wants to bring somebody in from an AL to a accredited lab and have it, you know, have them slap a sticker on it, they're going to get the same results. Right. And so yeah. um, and, and I, I wouldn't do it and I wouldn't let Adam video it. I didn't mean to interrupt your buddy, but I, I just wouldn't do it if I couldn't do it to that degree. Well, and to bring up a, a, another <laughs> comment that somebody had made was can you certify it? And I had responded as yeah. no, you cannot certify it, but we're still, we're still measuring to the same results that anybody that can certify will. Not that, not that I need this. If I was, if my shop was in a position where I needed these standards, you know, because of the work I was doing, because of contracts, then we would have to get a certification. We don't, we don't need a certification, right? but we're showing the practice of it though. Right. And Rick Guile, the gentleman who's done this for the vast majority of um, his career, has an AL2A certification. He was doing it back before AL2A even existed. And, um, you know, we've talked through all of that. And I, it's not even practical and reasonable for me to pay for that because I'm not doing this for a living. I'm this doing it. Hobby. It's a hobby for me. It's a serious hobby. And I do it for people that I really enjoy being with and hanging out. And I do it because I, I'll probably... I have a number of uh, granite stones in here, granite plates in here, and I'll acquire them over the years and then I know I can put them in perfect condition and if somebody wants them, I may sell them, but I'm not doing it for a living. It's something that I really enjoy doing it, and it's, it's a de-stressor for me for my normal life. So I want everybody to understand that, that we are doing this and I have no qualms about somebody that uh, may send a tech out from an AL2A lab or, or, or certified uh, group to check them. I'm more than happy to hold my work up to that. So anyway, I, I didn't want to take up a lot of Adam's video time for that, but I wanted to let people know that. We will be uh, measuring this today. Uh, we will be using essentially the Moody method. Uh, J.C. Moody published a paper in, I believe, the mid-50s, probably 55, about this particular procedure. There was a lot of math involved. Things have evolved over the last 45 and 65 years. Um, the, the, the written certification program was first published 
by the federal government in like 73, and then it was revised in like 1977. It's in the Federal Register. You can look that up. It's the, it's the calibration of granite surface plates. And then I believe somebody will correct me if I'm wrong, in 2006, ASME took over that program and republished it. And they have a little bit of a, what I think is a condensed version. I've reviewed all of that literature, including Moody's original paper. Um, and all of this work, you know, the basis for all this work falls under ISO, ISO 9000, you know, essentially. So I want everybody to know that we're well, well versed in all of that here. And that's how we're going to be doing this today. So the equipment we're using, you guys may have seen that at Mr. Terry's place, but it's over here on top of my big granite plate. And for all you who can see that, that large granite uh, plate there has a cover on it. This so, is big, uh, steric pink granite. Got the wooden cover. Yeah, cover there. just to protect it, because you know, unfortunately I have limited real estate here, and I, I do use it a little bit as Sounds a. Sounds like all of us. <laughs> <laughs> like a little bit of a bench top, so I want it protected. So thanks, Adam, for letting me do this. It'll be a lot of fun. So Adam's got the camera setting on the reference side of the plate, and this uh, we have the reed heads set on here, and we're getting ready to zero them. Um, he should insert a clip that shows the eight lines that we measured. They'll be on, in graphite pencil because when we go to lap this, it'll just come right off. Um, and again, if anybody wants to look it up, J.C. Moody, you can actually Google it. You'll find the paper. Explains exactly what we're doing here. So the first thing we're going to do is um, individually zero these heads so that we're within the working range of the pendulum inside the magnetic heads. Um, once that's done, we'll zero them together. And then I'm, we're going to take, uh, looks like we're going to have nine readings on each of these diagonals. Um, and then I, ha I haven't done the count, but I believe we're going to do five on the short legs and eight on the long legs for readings. So it'll be eight lines with those subsequent readings. Go ahead. A second to go ahead. I'm giving Lance a hand. We've got this little uh, button right here, and this is used to record the measurement. And you're moving every four inches, correct? Yeah, the critical part about the electronic levels is the um, back foot needs to reside in the same place that the front foot resided in in the prior measurement. Okay. And that's the you, most critical thing because you want that uh, that overlap, that consistent overlap of four inches. You so. may record that. I haven't recorded it. Yeah, we're going to have to count now. One, two, three, four, five. The next one's six. Yes, take that. Yeah, because I didn't hit it on that one. Yeah, that's the trouble with talking and yeah, trying to explain talk and film and, and, and then, yeah, I'm actually measure, so. You just tell me when. Go ahead. And uh, just for video purposes here, you know, I'm, I'm going to try to just shoot some of this right here. We're going to do diagonal, and I'll show a couple more shots of doing this, and then. Try not to bore everybody yeah, to death. Yeah, we'll, we'll come back with the results after we get a few shots of this measurements. Okay. This should be the last one on this room. Okay. And one okay. thing that we didn't uh, explain, we're using a straight edge, and that's <clears throat> for the level to follow, to have a straight edge. These angle plates here are simply just weights trying to hold it in place. Exactly. And if this, if, if we were to actually rotate um, either the A or the B head on this plate at this time, because we haven't perfectly leveled the granite, the reading would go so far out of range, it would, it, it would invalidate the, the uh, process, so. Okay. All right, so that one, that one run is done, so now we're gonna move this around. Move everything and run yep. the other diagonal. Okay. Go ahead. That was a good run. Okay, good. Okay. 
All right, All right. so uh, we're going to move. Uh, so we've moved on to this direction here, and we'll continue to map out those those lines accordingly, and then flip it 90 degrees, and then go this way. Yeah, I have um, the software set up so that we have to do the least amount of uh, recalibration or re-zeroing okay. on it. So we did the diagonals, now we're going to do the long runs, and then we'll come back and do the short runs. Okay. So yeah, we just took the last reading, and um, you know, basically this is like a um, it's a B plate, and it's not in that bad a condition, Adam. And really? we, you know, we did. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this uh, on camera or not, but we did get a really good reading. Our intercepts are all under 30 millionths. So the overall fluctuation or the overall elevation difference on this plate is two ten thousandths. So two tenths, so that's good. So, wow, yeah, that's, that's better than I expected. Yeah, and so I have I don't have all of the plate size and um, grades memorized in my head. So we'll go look up what a two foot by three foot plate grades at. See what it'll take to get this better than an A. Okay. So that'll be our okay. next step, and then yeah, if you want to pan over here. Yeah, let's so. let's check it out over here and see. And Adam's, Adam's got the camera on the reference side of this. Uh, so you're looking at the plate just right. like, right, like, just like you were looking at it on the computer right now. And I'm on the back side of the plate. It's obvious that whoever was using this plate is using it fairly heavily in this area, a little bit down here, and then quite a bit back here. So um, that's how the plate was being used. And so most I, of our wear, mm -hmm. low spots is going to be here, here, and here. here. Yeah, it's really interesting because I would say just about every used plate I've seen has got that very similar pattern. My big uh, granite there, my big pink granite was exactly the same way. The big hole was literally r like right here. Yeah. And then I had wear right in here. Now the difference was mine was like 2.2 thousandths. Yeah, yours was <laughs> it, a deep hole. It, it, was a, it was a crater in, in granite terms. So, wow. so we, we yeah. actually have a pretty decent plate here. Huh? This, this, this would be usable as it is. Wow. So yeah, you 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 did good, especially you know. Well, that's fantastic yeah. because you know I I I've done quite a few measurements on it, on the channel sharing some things, especially yep. like those straight edges. Yeah. You know, and and I and I mentioned this is mm -hmm. not verified, so I don't know how right. it is, but I right. was measuring a half a thousandth variation in those straight edges. Yeah. So you were you know it, the worst case scenario you had a you know basically a error of about two tenths depending yeah. on your measuring methods and all of that. Um, if, if you did everything else correctly. That's but, cool. So yep. I know whenever you go to start lapping now, you'll, you'll hit it a few licks and then you'll be able, we'll be able mm -hmm. to see where those low spots are at. We will right away and ho hopefully get those on camera. And the other thing we need to do next is we need to put the um, repeat -a meter on this because we need to look at local flatness. So we just looked at, you know, overall flatness um, over the full surface, but we'll see what local flatness looks like as well because that we need that to grade it. Okay. Yeah, but it's, it's good. Okay, so um, we just printed out the results for Adam's plate, and then we also went over to my reference book on um, grading. And um, so this is a neat, these are neat, it's a 3D map of the Moody plot um, showing what we were just explaining, and I, I don't know if uh, y'all could see that on the computer screen or not. Closures are good, they're under 30 millionths. That tells me that the data is um, relatively accurate. Um, it's grading it as a B, but if you look here, it's uh, 206 millionths or two tenths, a little over two tenths. And actually the upper limit of an A plate is 200. So we're right on the upper limit for overall elevation. Again, we, we have to do um, some repeat readings or local flatness evaluation, and that needs to meet um, 70 millionths local flatness, total, um, high to low, uh, in order to hit that A spec as well. That's good. You're going to use the repeat meter for that. Correct. Okay. Correct. Yep. And then this um, little numeric map here um, is good. And we'll probably, I'll probably have Adam take the time to do this. He's here and I'll have him do the work. We'll actually go through and write these numbers on each of the corresponding lines. And then when we start lapping it, um, we'll watch the lapping pattern 
and you know right there's your high point on the plate which is literally right under my finger here um, we should be able to the, the dusting pattern from the lap will match this numeric pattern here so we'll see virtually no cutting back in this area virtually initially no cutting here at the front of the reference part of the plate and a lot of it will happen in the middle and um, I believe uh, this yeah, this one corner appears high, but that's actually only at 100 millionths, so. But this is kind of verified to what you're saying right there. Yeah. So we're high here, mm -hmm. a little high over there, but there's your low, mm -hmm. low spot there and low over here as well. Right, and it's my understanding that you um, really do want to finish them a bit high in the middle. They talk about loading a plate and, and granite will move when you put weight on it. Mm -hmm. And so traditionally, I think it's, um, as I've been taught, it's a little better to have it high in the middle and perhaps sloping off of that. But either way, I mean, we're not very far away from an A plate. And then if we find any holes, that's the, that's the unknown right now. If we find a hole, yeah. we could go from having to lap it, say, maybe a half a tenth or even if we got aggressive a tenth to something way bigger than that. If, and, and because there's large areas in the Moody plot that aren't covered and our repeat... Uh, repeat a meter checking local flatness are going to check these areas. So, back at you in a little bit. So we are um, we have the repeat a meter out now, and um, Adam and I are just going over the plate to look at local flatness. So, um, we, I've already taken a quick peek at the plate. So there's a nice size hole right there at the corner, which we actually could see on the large plot. And um, there's you know, some other wear on the uh, side that Adam's standing on over there. Uh, but overall, local flatness isn't bad, but we have a lot of work to do. You're finding a lot of uh a lot of variation. A lot of variations yeah. in the local flatness there. Yeah, I mean, if I had to give you a reading now, the local flatness is worse than the overall flatness. Okay. It's probably, I'd have to grade it at three tenths because of that one hole. Okay. Um, and there's a crown in the middle. And since they use this plate around the edges, it's, it, it, we're getting a much worse local flatness reading um, than it really is and I say that because it won't take much to hit it with a lap and, and get it much better than it is So we're gonna shoot for we're gonna shoot for 70 millions Trying to trying to give you all a cool shot here. Yeah, we're giving you guys a bird's-eye view of what we're actually looking at You can see that big wear on the far side of the plate that we showed you on the um, elevation map And off camera, Adam and I were talking about this repeat -a meter People, it's not as simple to use as you might think because we're constantly going over um, areas that we've traversed with the base or with the tip. And it's simultaneously reading, referencing all three contact points. So you have to be very mindful of a 3D image in your head when you're using this because you can mistake a high spot as you're traversing on the far side as you're traversing over a low spot in the middle of the meter. And so hopefully you guys will find this interesting. Get to ride along. The ride along shots are always pretty cool. All righty, we're gonna start a lapping campaign here. I'm going to charge the, um, the larger of my two laps, larger via surface area, not wheat, but, um, this is a cast iron surface plate that Lance has already hand scraped. And this is what he uses to lap the granite for those that are unfamiliar. I've showed him doing this in a couple of previous videos, not too long ago. Yes. Um, but just for those that are not aware, I also showed that roller. We made that up at John's and he's going to be using that to charge the, charge the diamond. 
So yeah, this plate has had, I don't know how many hours of use. Um, this plate did the entire, um, all the work on the three foot by six foot paint grant. That's a lot of lapping too. Yeah, well you, if you look at the top of this plate, you can see that pretty much half or more of my scraping is gone. Now. Yeah. It's, yep. it's uh, almost, I've almost lapped all of the hand scraping out of it. One of the things I was going to ask you is there is as you continue to use this and it continues to wear, mm -hmm. is there a reason to have to hand scrape it again? Or it should you just... be. In fact, the more I use it on different plates, the flatter this will become. Okay. Um, and so, you know, likely uh, scraping it would potentially take it backwards in terms of flatness. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, they can't see it, but out of the camera view is my is another plate that I recently that got. hand scraped and that was matched to my a double A plate here. I mean it's an A plate because I don't keep it temperature and humidity controlled but a double A plate. Um, and I use that I've used that just for one small started one small project with it and we may end up using it primarily on this plate but I wanna sort of use my lap that I know is known on here just to get a feel for what the top of this looks like. Okay. Mm -hmm. On these. Here we go. Yeah, we're gonna have to block this thing up. Yeah, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to get this so that it's not rolling around. This this stand is exactly how it came, minus yeah. the mods that I've done. Right. And um, I've just never had a reason to do it. But we're gonna modify this stand later so that I can actually, you know, screw some jacks down. Right. And um, get this thing where it's solid wherever it sits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're gonna be doing a lot of um, stopping and starting. So we'll get it, we'll get it fixed up. My, uh, if Robin Renzetti's watching, he can hear my uh, lap is already fully charged and taped. So, anyway. All those real bright white spots must be little holes and valleys that that. That's, um, that's plate abuse. Yep. And that's how it was when I bought it. It was a, yep. it was a well abused so. plate. Matter of fact, when I got it for whatever reason, when I came in there to pick it up, it had dirt all over it. Right. Like people had picking things up out of the dirt and set it up on here. Yep, that's <laughs> crazy. Okay. Perfect. Will you get the, um, that numeric grid so over there that we printed? The printout, that top one right there, that one. Okay. Yeah, bring that over here, and if you would set it, set it next to me. Yeah, and this uh, is what we're talking about right here. Yeah. Instead of you're gonna reference just it. Set it just so I can rem remind myself. Right up there is fine. Okay. Take a peek at it. This um. Did you? Go ahead. Now this this is much softer granite than what the bulk of the work I've done on is that versus that pink granite it's got a lot of quartz in it. Okay, yeah. So I gotta be careful because okay, that's it. Yeah. Wow. Clean this again. We're likely gonna check this more frequently than we normally would, you know? Okay. Just because It's going to cut this very aggressively. The low spots are really starting to be highlighted now with this third, yeah, third lap. lap. Yeah. Of course, we got a low spot right on that edge there too. And, and I know this wasn't even part of the measurement there. That's correct. And like, um, and hopefully, I repeat this stuff correctly. I mean. I spent so many hours talking to my buddy Rick about all this, and um, but I think Rand R A H N was the a company that touted 
finishing their plate to the edge. In other words, you know, most, I call it setback, but I don't, I don't, to be honest with you, I don't know the official term, but you know, you know how we measured it in from the edge. Yeah. We, we, we have a, a, basically a border. That we you were telling me of. A, a before some of them will measure all the way to the edge. Yeah, Rand was the only, I think the only company maybe that basically when they sold a plate, they finished it to the edge and they guaranteed everything right to the edge, which is, I don't think that's how the industry does it now. Or too many people do it that way now because... Uh, Usually there's an accepted area where you're putting things on and off the granite yeah. um, that you, you, know, you just don't include that in the calibration measurement. <laughs> Is it better? Mm, it's All right. Perfect already. In the perfect already. <laughs> Look, come here. It's better than my, uh, better than my big plate. So you're minus um, 10 millionths there. You know, that's good. We're going to call that our zero. I rotate it 90 degrees and we are maybe plus five. That was two tenths before. Yeah. Before we started fussing with this. Okay. Look at this. Come here. Remember that before? It was a mm -hmm. tenth. Yeah, it was jumping it's, up and down. It's Ten millions now. That's eighty. No, oh, yeah, it's right there. We may be done with this today. <laughs> Not kidding. Okay. So that's one of those times when you're like, well, there must be a hole there. Well, I don't know if there's a hole there. Could be a high spot right here. But I won't be able to pull this back far enough to see. Right. So. You know, so let me go this way and see. Okay, so there we're, so in that dark spot, and we're, we're kind of out of our two inch border, but it doesn't matter. We're a tenth there because of that corner, okay? Yeah, I mean, over 80% uh, of this plate were already 20 million local cool. flatness, which is amazing. The whole thing, we went from 2.2 tenths to a little over a tenth, and it's only because of these spots right here. And you can see that didn't even take for what? Well, we did that in maybe 15 minutes. 10, 15 minutes. I mean, that's with cleaning it and everything. Yeah. Yep. So A couple of licks. Yeah, but. so we'll, I'm gonna, um, gingerly go back over the plate again with the lap and uh and we'll wash it up real good and we'll let it dry overnight and then we'll come back and read it again in the morning i'm gonna okay. try to take it down even and get these couple of little low spots and um you know I, I think we can try to do whatever you want to do but i think if we get this down to 150 millionths, a tenth and a half or less. Um, with a, we can, I know I can get the repeatability under 50 millionths. You'll have an A, mm -hmm. a good solid A plate. If you want to try to achieve those double A numbers, we can, but we'll see. You know, I'm gonna let you run the show, man. Yeah, you, we can chase our tail too if we're not careful. Right, okay. I know, I know that's to take consideration also. Yeah. Just like he was explaining to me, it's really easy where we had a little high in the middle there, it's really easy to overlap this quickly and then you have a bowl shape instead. And then you're, and then that's when you're chasing your tail because then you're having to go back and lap it even more to bring it down. Yeah, it's, um, it can be an exercise in patience, but less can be a lot more. Yeah, I kind of was missing this. He's talking to me as he's working, Lance's, but <laughs> so he's cleaning, he, he cleans it in between lapping sessions and it's just like he was he was just telling me this he goes as rick told him taught him you got to get your hands in there and get dirty and i completely understand there's a lot of things that will not substitute the human touch you got to get in there and work it you can feel it you can feel the diamond in the in the dust and um break it up and get it clean so uh just use simple 
Windex. window cleaner right here yeah. any kind of window cleaner windex mm -hmm. and get you you know have you plenty of towels handy don't try to be cheap and just have a few just have your roll of towels and then clean it i know everybody has a different opinion you know i like to use on my plates i like to use fantastic and i know like you know cash masters up at kinetic he did a live stream on instagram not long ago and he likes to use gogo -Go gojo hand cleaner without the pumice i think that's the name of the brand but and and he likes to clean his plates with that you know which i think is a great degreaser so everybody has their recipe but rick rick kind of screams at me about putting anything on a plate that um that's being a little dramatic but gives him crap about <laughs> putting anything on a plate that can leave a residue. Right. So he likes window cleaner. Plain old, plain simple window cleaner. I well, will not The man's been in the business for 30 to 40 years. Yeah, so, so he's he's got experience. He knows what yeah. he's talking about. He doesn't like anything on a plate that could leave a residue that will then cause you to collect particulates and then that just turns into a lapping compound on the base of anything you put on it. Okay. And so you know, it makes sense. It makes good sense. I still do like my Fantastic, but it does leave a little tiny bit of a residue. It's a degreaser. So this plate's beautiful now. I mean, we just have a couple of small areas here and uh, it cut way faster. And like I was telling Adam, I don't have a, most of my experience, which is still limited, is on pink on the, granite. The pink granite um, there. And it's, it's hard. It's got so much quartz in it. And um, this, yeah is cutting very quickly it's soft so it's very and soft I, and, and me being around it here for just a couple of times now i can see just for those that are uh wondering see that's this pink granite that's the cover over it but here's yes. another stare at pink granite right here okay so this is what we're keep referring to this is a harder granite than the gray that i have so this is a softer material here well oh, that's looking good yeah, it is. It's really, it really is looking excellent. All right, we're going to give you guys our, another ride along, but I'm having to, well, Lance is having to reset zero because just the weight of the Noga and the camera on the uh, repeatometer is throwing it off. And this is, <laughs> this isn't the way that you should use a repeatometer as a camera <laughs> hanging off the back of it. But yeah, he just did an initial inspection and he is extremely pleased with the results he's got off this already. I think we're right on the borderline of double A on local repeatability. Yeah, guys, and I'm having to reach around the camera to try to adjust this, and I'm not going to get it exactly on zero, and it doesn't matter that it's on zero. One of the first checks we do is you put the repeatometer in the center, and then you rotate it 90 degrees to see what variation, and you guys can see better than me. It's probably 10 millionths, maybe 15 millionths. Um, in the 290 degree axes there which is excellent i mean you'd like it to be zero it's pretty close to zero and then just with a little bit of lapping on my seasoned lap i'm not going to do the whole plate but you guys can see that is it is it repeating the way it did earlier or is yeah. the camera messing with it well it's tough because i have to go slower with the camera on there but um but you guys can see we're like 20, maybe 30 millionths um, in local repeatability. I, you know, hopefully you all remembered when you saw this, we were two tenths before. So just, you know, we've been out here about a half an hour. And um, like I said to Adam off camera, you know, my lap has got a lot of time on it. And so... Um, it, it, it's it's flat 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 so lance was extremely pleased at how quickly this thing is flattening out and getting good results compared to the pink granites that he's been working on yeah the, the, it's just substantially different and I, i'm going to call this 50 millionths total um and, and see, so and see right over here where he was Will you bring them right over here? Yeah. See, this is that low spot, but you really can't even see much of a difference when you, mm -mm. I was asking Lance, maybe it's the diameter of the little carbide pad is, you know, gapping that little dark spot right in there. Yeah, there appears to be some linear almost grooves. Like, almost like yeah. rub marks through there. Exactly. And so, um, and, and you're right, it's probably bridging those yep. little variations. Bridging, yeah. And there's so. a, 
there's a little spot like right there yeah you can see a little bit more less and then of course across the the edge of it there as well so that's pretty cool yeah so we're going to let this set overnight now let it dry out completely um in this ac room and um and then we'll check we'll check the overall elevation differences in the morning and okay i think we'll try to shoot for you know a tenth or less since this worked so quickly we can get more aggressive with the time we have maybe get you a double a by the time we're done okay all right we're gonna let it sit overnight we'll be we'll be right back though all right so it's the next day the next morning and we just finished measuring the uh, granite surface plate again i'm gonna let lance explain to you what he found and uh, what he's determining where we're at right now i, I think it's good news but I think there's still a slight amount of work left to do on the on the plate. So yes. what'd you find? So we um, we re re measured this morning and we're at a hundred and I think it was 145 or 146 millionths, so 1.46 tenths um, overall flatness, which makes it an A plate. But as we were measuring it, I told Adam I thought based on the numbers there was going to be kind of a hole in the middle, which is how I started lapping it is from the center and then I was working out and I was being very careful the edges because I didn't want to roll them over. So basically what we have right now is something that looks like this the whole way across. It's pretty symmetrical. I haven't looked at the number graph yet, but um, so now what I'm going to do is just come in and I'll lap these two sides and, and bring it together because if anything, we want a little bit of a, a crown on the center. You okay. know, if we can achieve that, it's not that critical because you're only talking about 20 to 40 millionths. Mm -hmm. So, um, and anyway. so you're going to do the sides a little bit heavier and, and you may even get some of these, I think low this, spots. All this will come out. Yeah, now. Okay. And so the whole surface will be uh, very homogeneous. So, all right. um, but yeah, it's an a right now. We know that the repeatability is under at or under 50 millionths, which is just sort of right at the upper limit of double a. And so we'd have to get it to a hundred millionths or a tenth to get into double A range on overall flatness. Okay. So when yeah, you know, I should be able to get it close to double A before you leave without a problem. Okay. Cool. So here, yeah. here's a here's a little look at the uh, computer screen. I know it's hard to see, but that's sort of a you know map of of what the surface is looking like within the computer system. It doesn't really look like that unless you're measuring in. Millions of an inch. Millions of an inch is <laughs> that's what it looks like right yeah. there. That's pretty cool. So you can see we got a little little bit of a dip, which will be sort of right in here in this side. Exactly. All right. So, uh, you know, we'll do another update later whenever we uh, make some more progress on it. All right. All right. Well, we're on to a, well, Lance is on to another uh, light lapping session here. We've already measured it again and uh, found out that you actually were, were actually a little bit low here and a little bit low right there. Mm -hmm. Overall flatness was 1.6 tenths, yeah, right? 160 million. 160 million, so it's a great A right now. But I wanted to try to capture this before you got too far into it. You can see because it's darker there and there, he's, you know, he's already run the lap on it, so you can see the high spot. So he's just trying to do a very careful, very light lap. <clears throat> focus more in this area and try to stay off the corners and see if we can drop it down a little bit more. Well, and then also this um, a little learning on my part because this this uh, dark gray granite is a lot softer than the paint. It cuts a in a lot softer. faster yeah, than the paint. I've been a little more assertive than I needed to be. Which we finally went, we went kind of two ways. I lapped it to begin with and it got a little hollow in the center. So I went back and I did the, I did the edges, which brought it back to a nice dome shape, but I overdid it on the high spots. So it's all about learning, hey, you know? You're learning and but, you're practicing. I mean, it's still an A grade plate. It's phenomenal yeah. already. We're just yeah. picking over. And, like, and, and you're, um, you use the repeatometer, and yep. it was really good here in the center anyway, too. Yeah, everywhere except for when I got the back of the repeatometer down in this area here was 40 millionths over the whole plate, which is a double A repeat, uh, local repeat reading. It, it just put it back out into an A out here. So since we're so close, I'd like to get this to 100 millionths 
which is a tenth overall flatness, yeah. and then keep it down around that 40, 45 million. So technically, it's in the double A range. Yeah. That's what I want to do for you. That would be sweet. Yeah. You so we're that? baby lapping right now. See? And my buddy Rick, my mentor, told me that these these gray or dark plates really you got to be careful with. Them. Oh man, they're, excuse me. Bless you. That they are extremely soft. So yeah. I had no idea how soft. So I've only ever done a couple of small ones like this. So anyway, we'll bring you back for the next update and uh, let you know. Maybe we'll hit that double A grade pretty soon. Making another measurement on the plate here. I've been giving Lance a hand recording the measurements. That's what this little guy is right here. Watching the monitor for it to settle. That's that. That's that low corner. That's that low corner over yeah. there. We're but uh, headway, but we're... yeah. So I was just giving an update. You know, he's he continues to do some lapping here, and. Um, lapping and measuring it it's definitely takes some time doing this because we have a total of eight eight run eight lines that we have to to measure so we'll bring you back whenever we get our results look at that, zero <laughs> all right last measurement we're going to get lance's reaction to this it's either going to be good or bad that run was like Three tenths of an arc second. Like that's yeah. how flat that that one line is. Yeah, I don't know if I want my reaction on camera. Let's let's see it. Ah! Oh my <laughs> god! Oh my god! Yeah, that's phenomenal. Seventy-four millionths overall flatness. So seven tenths of a tenth. Really? You yeah. got it down it's that a, close, huh? A, so a, that's double A, right? It's, it's double A. You oh yeah. Can't, Double A. can't grade it on. double A yet until I check it with the... Uh, you got to check local flatness with the repeatometer. And I see two little spots in here I'm going to hit with the lap yet. So we'll probably get it closer to 50 or 60 I'm, millions overall flatness. I'm definitely seeing this still low here. Yeah. Here and, and here still and being low. And then yeah. you got a low spot sort of well, right, in, the, right in here. Yeah, I told you the middle was going to have a little cup in it, which and that's because of the the way we're lapping it. But um, there's still a little bit of a ridiculous ridge here. Like I say ridiculous, probably 30 millionths or something right here where my hand is. Um, but yeah, at this point, if we keep chasing it, we can make it a lot worse. Yeah, I, well, I know that's the big worry. But this is the one I was hoping to get on video because this is yeah. the first time that we actually hit double A on yeah. overall yeah. flatness of the plate. Yeah, I so, could have done one or two less lapping sessions if, if we hadn't charged the lap before we started. We talked about that off camera. Charge the, the very it should have been the beginning of the video where yeah, I showed you charging it. He we said didn't, didn't need to charge it. And I saw a lot of diamond on that too. Whenever yeah, you I mean it was still like charged, <laughs> and this is so soft. This plate's so soft, but it's all right. It's a lot of fun. I still enjoy doing it. And um, you see the reflection. Yeah, it's just it's 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 awesome. Yeah. All right. So I think this is our last lapping session that we're going to be doing. I know it's going to be the last one that I'm going to be here for because uh, I'm getting ready to leave. And I'm going to leave this with Lance for the next week. But he's extremely happy. I think he's extremely happy of where he's got this measurement now on uh, overall flatness and local flatness. So where are we at? It's, it's, it's well into double A. So it's uh, overall flatness, 65 million. So that's for uh, 24 by 36. And then repeatability, local flatness is no worse than 40 million. It's actually a little better than 40 million. And the spec on a double A is 45 million for this size. But when you so, say that though, we'll, we'll show you. Yeah. So you're measuring that. You were within 20 million on most everything. But yeah. you're talking about that corner over the there. The only right? reason I'm calling it 40 million rather than 20, between 20 and 30 million is this corner here. It's got a, yeah. a little it's right in there. Yeah. And again, we're talking 10 to 15 million variance over the rest of the plate. Yeah. Over the variance of the rest of the plate. So it's, it's a double A plate. So even if Adam takes, 
get home and it settles out a little bit different at his place with temperature and humidity, there's absolutely no way it's not an A plate, but it'll probably remain within a double A standard. Yeah. Because we're 100, 100 millionths or a tenth overall flatness would be a double A. We're 65. That is awesome. Yep. Really, really happy. Hope you're happy, buddy. Uh, I know he was really happy with his intercepts. Uh, intercepts. Yep. 1.5 millionths and 7.8 7 .8 millionths, yep. which is where they cross, the difference between where they cross yeah. there. Yeah, I mean, truthfully, if we keep mucking around with this plate, we'll just make it worse. Yeah, because then you could start going low in some yeah, places there. we could do a lot of work that we've already done. So. But uh, well, let's, let's, uh, we're going to slap my iPhone on there and uh, take one more video of the dials just so they can see that. Yeah, sure. And then I think that's going to be it. Yeah, we don't want to bore them to death. Okay, so Adam um, set this up on the repeat meter and we will get a little bit more fluctuation whenever I change direction on the repeat meter with this weight on the back because it's not balancing it perfectly. Yeah. But um, you guys can see that there's very little within um, plus or minus 20 millionths. And when I put a side load on this, it changes it as well with the camera weight. But um, that's yeah. just the only way I can get a camera mounted on here. And it's yeah. The no go holder with the camera, so it's a little heavy. So it's actually fluctuating just a smidge more because of the back and forth movement with the weight on the back of it. But I think you guys can see we're plus or minus 20 millionths on the plate. It's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Can you show them this uh, corner over here? This, the, the low corner. That... Well, uh, from this angle, it's no longer a low corner. Yeah, <laughs> so, side, yeah. so we'll have to see if I can find a, a way to make that corner look worse. So, well, that is the low corner there. We, we jumped down to 40 millions, but I'm past our actual lapping area. So anyway, if we go right to our lapping area, it's, eh, it's still close to 40 millions. Yeah. But anyway, it's phenomenal. All right, well, we've completed the lapping on my uh, 24 by 36 granite surface plate here. And Lance finally has it to where he is happy with it. And we are at an overall flatness from end to end at 65 millionths. And our local flatness using the repeatometer is within 35 millionths. Is that correct? Within 35 millionths. And it is... It is good. Now this is a considered a double A where we've got it. Correct. It is a double A grade. This is a little bit of kind of like a, a before and after. So this is this is what the map looked like uh, when we first measured it right there. All right, and then this is where we're at currently right there. And these papers right here just represent a numerical version of this right here. Okay, but it is. It is extremely flat and it's beautiful. It's got a nice polished finish whenever you actually look across it like that. Well, it's hard to see it, but you might be able to see Lance's reflection right there. And I know that I have a um, very flat and true granite surface plate that I can now take home and use for measuring and inspecting. So. Thanks a lot, buddy. I really appreciate the help on this. You're welcome. You have a really nice plate now. So. I think I do. Yeah. Thanks to you. Yeah. All right.